It says, In my vision at night, I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away. And so his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. Mary can begin to, to put those pieces together. I'm a descendant of David. Joseph is also a descendant of David. Somebody from David's line is supposed to sit on the throne of God forever. And then there's, there's Daniel's prophecy about one who's like the Ancient of Days, who stands in the presence of God, and he will establish a kingdom, and, and that kingdom will never be destroyed. It will never end. And so Gabriel says, God will give him the throne of his father David, and his kingdom will never end. And Mary begins to understand the special role that she has in God's plan at this moment. God is at work, and her son, Jesus, is going to be the Messiah. But she does question the mechanics. How will this be since I'm a virgin? And Gabriel has an answer. The Holy Spirit will come on you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I wonder if in that, Mary recognized the fulfillment of yet another Old Testament prophecy. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and we'll call him Emmanuel. The word Emmanuel means God with us. So Mary is told that her son is going to be the son of God, that he's going to be conceived by the Holy Spirit. Literally, God is going to be with us. Mary could put all those pieces together and she could begin to see, I'm the mother of God's promised Messiah. I'm the, the one through whom God is going to fulfill all of those Old Testament prophecies. My child is him. But the control freak in me wonders if Mary might not want to ask some more questions. When will this happen? What about the prophecies that the Messiah is going to come from Bethlehem? Because have you noticed this is Nazareth? And what do I do about the repercussions? You're telling me that I'm going to have a child while I'm a virgin. But what about that guy I'm betrothed to? Do you really think he's going to believe that I haven't been unfaithful? That, that this is some kind of miraculous child? It's pretty hard to believe. Interviewer Larry King was once asked, Larry, if you could ask any question you wanted, of any person in history, what would you like to ask? And Larry King said, I would like to ask Jesus if he was indeed virgin born. The answer to that question would define history for me. Yeah. The answer to that question defines history for a lot of people. If Jesus is born of a virgin, if he's the fulfillment of those Old Testament prophecies, then it's God's plan coming into fruition. It's God at work. It marks Jesus as more special than any other human being who's ever lived. But you know, a lot of people don't believe that Jesus was born of a virgin. Back in, 2000, I'm sorry, back in 1998, a poll was done of over 7,000 Protestant clergy 60% of the United Methodist pastors who were surveyed said they did not believe in the virgin birth. 49% of Presbyterian ministers said they didn't think the virgin birth really happened. 34% of American Baptist pastors said, nah. 19% of Lutheran pastors said, hmm. 
A lot of people have difficulty believing that Jesus is really born of a virgin. Maybe Mary could have worried that Joseph might have some trouble believing. Well, for that matter, what about the people of her town? You know, in a small town, people like to talk. This is going to taint her reputation in a way that will never go away. 25 years from now, when somebody talks about Mary, they're going to be talking about that fantastic story about a virgin birth, right? My questions wouldn't have ended even there. How am I supposed to provide for this child? If he's born of a virgin, I don't have a husband. How are we going to put food on our table, Lord? How do I parent one who is the Son of God? Lord, you're giving me a pretty big order here. Maybe you better explain some things more clearly. By the way, Lord, should I tell people who he is? How are they going to know? Mary could have asked so many questions, and, and they all would have been legitimate questions. But once Mary is satisfied that the Lord is at work, she simply says, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. It, it's like Mary took all of her questions and said, Lord, I don't know what you're doing. But if you're doing it, it's going to be okay. You know what you're doing. You don't have to explain it to me. You don't have to give me all the answers. I trust you. I'm the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. In April of 1997... Lee and Dina Smith found out that they were pregnant and they were thrilled because they'd been trying to achieve that goal for seven years. They were doing the kinds of things that expectant parents do. They went to the doctors. They had the ultrasound. When the ultrasound was being done, they were all excited. They found out that it was going to be a little girl. But then all of a sudden, the ultrasound tech got really quiet. And she stopped showing them the things in the picture. And Lee Smith kind of intuited that something wasn't exactly right. He said, what's wrong? And the text said, well, there is something wrong, but I need to, to have the doctor talk to you about it. She went to the doctor. He came in. He did some things with the ultrasound wand. And he said, I, I see a problem. Your baby isn't developing properly. Your baby has a condition called spina bifida where the spine is not closing. And your baby also has some places in the brain that should be developing, but they are simply fluid. It's a, it's a process that we call hydrocephalus. I, I don't think this is going to be good news. The doctor sent them to a, a specialist in a bigger hospital the specialist repeated some of those ultrasound things and, and he said to them, I'm sorry, but there is no way that your baby is going to live. Your baby is probably going to die in utero and you'll have a stillbirth. But if the baby is born, it will be born in a vegetative state and it won't live for very long. What we'd recommend to you, the doctor said, is that you simply terminate this pregnancy. And the Smiths couldn't do that. They refused the abortion. And the doctor said, that's foolish. Don't you understand? That fluid that is collecting in your baby's brain is going to continue to collect, and it eventually is going to cause your baby's head to explode. Your child is not going to live. No, doctor. We will not have the abortion. Well, I'll tell you what. 
I'll give you 30 days to think about it. You come back in 30 days, we'll do this again. You'll be able to see for yourself how the fluid has increased. Maybe then you'll believe me. The Smiths went home and they started praying. And they asked their friends and their neighbors and the people at their church to pray. And for the next month, everybody prayed about that baby and about its future. And the time came to go back and have the second or third ultrasound. And the doctor's using the wand and he's looking at the baby. And he says, your child is fine. I don't know what to say about it. The spine is fully developed. The ventricles of the brain where hydrocephalus builds up are normal size. I don't have an explanation for how this happened. But your child is fine. And the Smiths provided the explanation. They said we went home and we prayed and we asked other people to pray for us. And God has given us a miracle. Well, as you can imagine, the Smiths told their story pretty often. It's wonderful when God works in your life and gives you that kind of miracle. But it wasn't too long. They hadn't told the story too many times until somebody came up to them and said, I was pregnant and my baby had the same kind of problem and I prayed and my baby died. Lee Smith answered that. He said, sometimes God chooses to heal, and sometimes he does not. When he doesn't, he's still the same God. And the God of all comfort makes himself available, and his grace is sufficient. You understand? That's what we call faith. That's what Mary presented to the Lord when she, when she didn't ask all of those questions. She basically was saying to Gabriel and to the Lord through Gabriel, I trust you. I don't know how all this is working out. I, I don't have all the answers to the future. I don't understand everything you're up to here, God. But I'll trust you because you're God and you know what you're doing. You and I have to have that same kind of faith. We think sometimes that, that confession is the process of standing up before a group of people and saying, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. We give our life to Christ as we make that confession and we're baptized into Christianity. But that's just the beginning of faith when you make that confession. That's just the first baby step in following God. And you are going to have so many more questions. When will Jesus come? What will it be like? And the Lord's answer is, watch, be ready. What will my resurrection body be like? What will it be like when we get to heaven? Will we know each other? Will we have the same relationships that we had when we were on the earth? And Paul answers, and he says, just as we've borne the image of the earthly man, so we will bear the image of the heavenly man. The only real clue we have about what life will be like in heaven is to look at Jesus' body after the resurrection. Somehow we'll be like him. Well, Lord, I've heard of, that heaven is a place where there are no more tears, no more pain. What happens if there's somebody in my family that's not there? I think that will be an extremely painful thing to face, that, that one of my loved ones didn't make it and is lost forever. Lord, how's that going to work out? We could ask so, so many questions. 
What will we do in heaven? Will we have a mansion? Will we have a cabin in the corner of glory land? What's death like? Why do evil people sometimes seem to get by with it on this earth? Why doesn't God stop it? So many questions. And faith. Faith is simply telling God, I don't need you to answer all my questions. You're God, and I will trust you that you know what you're doing. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says, We walk by faith, not by sight. Mary showed us how. I'm the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. Mary doesn't know everything. She knows the one thing she needs to know. She knows her God. Now I want to backtrack a moment. And I want to point out one more thing that Mary did knew. She knew that whatever God was up to, she didn't deserve to be part of it. When the angel shows up, when Gabriel goes to her, he says, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. And Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. Highly favored there does not mean what you probably think it means. It doesn't mean, Mary, God has been watching you and you're a fine lady. It doesn't mean that God looked at Mary and found her sinless, although there are some churches that teach that. Greetings, you who are highly favored, means that she is about to be highly favored. It's not that God has already looked at her and found her wonderful. It's that, about, it's that he is about to do something wonderful in her life. She has been chosen out of all the other possibilities to be the mother of the Messiah. And Mary's reaction is to be terrified. You might have noticed in Scripture that the Lord is with you is not always considered to be good news. In fact, Almost always, when people find themselves in the presence of the Lord, their reaction is terror. In Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah the prophet stands before God. He sees the throne room of heaven. He sees God sitting on his throne, surrounded by angels. And Isaiah's response to that vision is, Woe is me! I am in trouble here! My eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts, and I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, and oh boy, am I in a mess. Peter, he's out fishing, and the Lord is there. Peter, put your net out on the other side of the boat. Well, we haven't caught anything, Lord, but because you say so, I will. They put the net on the other side of the boat and they catch so many fish that the, the fish are beginning to sink the boat. And Peter falls on his knees in the midst of all those writhing fish. And he says, go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. Almost always. When people in the Bible find themselves in the presence of the Lord, their reaction is terror. I'm in trouble here. And that's exactly Mary's reaction. Greetings, you who are highly favored. Mary was greatly troubled and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. And Gabriel has to go on and reassure her, don't be afraid, Mary. Mary's afraid. Because she doesn't think she deserves to be talking to an angel. She doesn't think she deserves God's special notice. To have God work in her life in some special way. 
She doesn't feel like she's up to the task. But you see, that's the point. You are highly favored. You are receiving grace. God is doing something in you and through you that you might not deserve. But God has chosen you anyway. And you are blessed because of it. So here we sit. It's Christmas Eve. In another week, it'll be a new year. What's it hold? What will it be like? What will happen before we celebrate another Christmas? Will all of us even be here a year from now? And what's going to be the rest of my life? Lord, how long will I be here? What is it that you'd like for me to accomplish? Whose life am I supposed to touch? What am I supposed to do? That's so many questions. And Lord, I don't have any answers. Except to say, you're the God who holds the future. And I trust you. And Lord, I hear that you've, you've given us all a ministry. That in the body of Christ, every one of us is important. And every one of us has a part in your plan. Lord, I don't deserve that. I'm not worthy of that. I'm a sinner. I know my sin. Other people know my sin. You know what you do when it's Christmas and somebody wants to give you a gift? You take it. And you say thanks. Mary accepts the gift. I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. And that's what each of us has to do. Accept the gift that God is going to take care of us, that we may not understand everything. There may be some painful things that will be part of our future, but somehow God will see us through. The God of all comfort will be with us. He will be enough. And Lord, I don't have any right to, to expect to have a role in your plans. I'm just a fallible human being. But if you'll use me, I'm willing to be used. And I'll accept my role. God wants to give us the gift of salvation. If he wants to work through us and in us, if he wants to share eternity with us, let's just say thanks and accept that gift. In just a moment, we're going to stand and sing an invitation hymn. And some of you have not accepted the gift yet. You've never turned your life over to Christ. You've never been baptized. You can do that today. Before you walk out of here, you can say to the Lord, I believe in Jesus. I'll accept the gift. I want to spend eternity with you. If you're ready to give your life to Christ and be baptized this morning, as we stand and sing, you come forward.
Good morning. In the way of a prayer requests, I've got um, several of them here that uh, we talked about back in the back this morning. Um, got uh, one one thing I want to share is uh, Kim Bloomingdale had a note here from Mary Morrow and said uh, Mary got a hold of her and said uh, uh, sends all his wishes to the, everyone here at Plain Earth Christian Church and um, wants everyone to have a Merry Christmas. So it's always good to hear from Mary. Um, it's been a while. So. Um, We've got uh, Barb Frank has to, uh, for uh, prayer for Bob O'Dell, uh, prostate cancer. Um, she also mentioned uh, Brittany Alden been on her um, prayer list for a while, and um, she's um, taking radiation treatments now, so keep uh, Brittany in your prayers there. Um, <clears throat> might mention, um, if you didn't notice, I don't know if you noticed or not, but anyway, you got a couple things back in the back today. Um, Dennis Cool brought to my attention that um, each year uh, they see to it that there are um, read through the Bible in a year. Um, pamphlets back here, so if you want to pick one of those up, and as you pick that up, you got a friend who might want to read through the Bible in a year, pick one up for them too. So uh, be sure and uh, take a look at that. I think also the um, got some updates for the um, um, church directory. Thank you very much. It's like I get all the blank. Thank you, Mark, for the church directory coming uh, back there. So if you want to update your directories, just pick up the extra page back there, and that'll update your directory for you. The, um, of course, the Christmas can taught today at 4 o'clock, and uh, that time was chosen, so you can still have family time in the evening. If you got some family coming, bring them to Cantata. So that'll be today at 4 o'clock, and they've been working real hard on that. Uh, no Wednesday night Bible study this coming week. Um, <clears throat> the um, care meeting coming up. I might also mention uh, one of the things that the, the church is working with and kind of helping uh, the financial end of it is uh, we've got the uh, Financial Peace University, and that's really just how to handle money, and a lot of people, I think, are open to the idea of how can I might manage money a little better, uh, so that'll be starting on January 6th. Again, if you've got some friends, I mean, you have to go to church here to, to appreciate that, so if you've got some friends who want to come, uh, it's $40 for, for a couple, so uh, please invite them to come along. So, um, any other announcements? Or any other? Yes, TD? Get together, good. It's not a good time. Uh, what time are you talking, TD? Talking five o'clock on January the sixth here at the church. So. Okay. So fellowship meeting, and that's four o'clock, and that's uh, the following week. So, um, and we always like input for that. Any ideas you have? You think? We got a new update. It'll be 5:30. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Thank you very much. So we want to keep everything in order here. So, okay. Any other announcements? Yes, Jamie. Okay, thank you for sharing that, Jamie. Okay, so cancer-free at this point. Thank you. Anything else? All righty, we have a word of prayer. <clears throat> I might miss mention Nikki's here this morning. She's had COVID, so hey, good to have you here, Nikki. Prayer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you, dear Lord God and Father. We do thank you for this opportunity to just come together as family this morning to just hear your word. Um, proclaimed. Lord, um, help us to understand that um, 
there are many things that uh, come up in our lives and uh, we try to fix them. And uh, Lord, I guess that's our job. But at the same time, we forget you many times. I just pray, Lord, that you help us to have the faith that we need to, to understand that you are in control. Um, whatever the situation is, Lord, um, you're there for us. Help us, Lord, to turn to you, to consider you in the choices we make on a daily basis. Lord, I pray now you'll be with us as we go our separate ways. Uh, please guide and direct us that we might come back together safe and sound just to worship you once more. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.